It can only get worse. <laughs> I'm sure. No, it's, it's fine. Don't worry. Let's, let's have sure. some fun. Yes, exactly. So um, I'm going to say my spiel and then I'll yes. introduce you. And That's I usually fine. do ask our guests to um, share a funny lawyer joke or just a joke in general. So do you have one in mind? Um, I'm just trying to think if I know a funny lawyer legal joke or what have, give me some examples. People have done non-legal jokes. What's the sort of theme they've gone down just to make sure that I'm on the right sort of theme. Oh, um, let's have a look. Well, now you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite joke is, uh, let me see. Oh, where does Napoleon keep his armies? Up his sleeves. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, I, I can go like really like like that way. That that's fine. Like you know, I've I've got some really embarrassingly bad jokes in in that sense. Like, what happened to the frog when it broke down? What? It got towed away. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so we we we, we can. We can roll with those. That's fine. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, cool. we'll do I like that. those. Yes. Okay. Cool. So I'll say my spiel and then we'll introduce you and then we'll just take it from there. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. <clears throat> Episode 68 title and entrepreneurial pursuit. Let me say that again. Episode 68 title and entrepreneurial pursuit across the pond. Interview with Robert Hanna, brought to you by Go Legal Yourself, an online business providing real legal tools for savvy entrepreneurs. Welcome to Go Legal Yourself podcast, episode 68, title, An Entrepreneurial Pursuit from Across the Pond. I'm your host, Attorney Kelly Bagler, the Queen of Business Law. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing Robert Hanna, he is the co-founder and managing director of Kasoon Car, and he actually is a host of Legally Speaking podcast. Welcome to the show, Robert. Welcome. Nice to thank you so much for having me, Kelly. It's a real pleasure to be here. I'm genuinely honoured. So it's great to uh, great to be speaking with you. Fantastic. I'm I'm really excited about this show because, like myself, you have a funny accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, it must be a Midlands thing. Just so you know, people in America love the English accent. Absolutely <laughs> love it. So we can actually be really upset with them and say curse words and they'll just kind of smile and say, say it again, say it again. <laughs> I, I know, I know. And it, but the thing is, I have quite a vanilla English accent in some sense because I don't have a very northern or sort of southern. It's just very Midlands. So I don't know if that's a good or bad thing or whether that makes me more or less traditional sort of English sounding. Well, well, as long as you don't come across Cockney, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's yeah. a tough one. But you sound very professional. Well, thank you. Thank yes. You. So, Robert, do you have a joke to share with us? I do. I've been looking forward to this. Kelly, what happened to the frog when it broke down? I don't know what happened. It got towed away. <laughs> Next time we have you on the show, we're going to have you share one of those lawyer jokes, right? So the, the show is obviously hosted by an attorney. And so I, I, I love sharing lawyer jokes from all of my guests, but I love this one too. One of my favorites um, is, what's the difference between a lawyer and God? Go on. God doesn't think he's a lawyer. <laughs> 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 that's very good very good yes exactly so robert tell us about your entrepreneurial journey and pursuit tell give us a, a bit of a background so yeah i started um my career i'm a uh, a recruiter turned entrepreneur turned investor and now podcaster so i i started my career in the city of london during the the 2008 
crash um, and I, I learned a lot during that time obviously now when we're, we're going through COVID I was very much a trainee at that point but I, I was just inspired from from being in the city of London and being around people that were setting up starting up businesses and it was always something I'd had an ambition in wanting to do at some stage so I once I'd felt I had acquired enough skills knowledge and experience so I started life at a, a FTSE 250 business I, I was headhunted to join a boutique business help scale um, that business I felt it was ready um, to to take the plunge to, to set up myself I felt I built up the skills and networks to do that um, I guess my, my my passion for being connected to the legal sector and why my business um, is a legal recruitment business and I have the legal speaking podcast and various other ventures I'm involved in connected to the law and um, my grandfather ran a, a very successful law firm here in the in the UK which was one of the most successful out of outside of any major London law firm in the 1950s, because where I come from, Leicester, that was the second richest city in the UK at, at that point in time, due to a lot of the hosiery and commercial trade. And, and as a youngster, I was in the law firm, um, just inspired really. Um, you know, I was doing all the really highly important jobs from photocopying to stapling to <laughs> everything else in, 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 in between. Um, but I always- important. <laughs> Indeed, but I always knew I wanted to try and keep the car family legacy name in business. So I, I, I came up with a creative idea of kind of using my recruitment skills and know-how and, and penetrating the, the legal sector and some great business partners, mentors and people along the way. I was able to, to found Kasun Car in, in, in 2016. Um, and it's been a hell of a journey. And it's just been a continual evolution. As you'll know, Kelly, you know, so being an attorney, business owner and everything else in between, you're constantly learning, you're constantly evolving, you're constantly looking at ways you can get better and improve things um, and and you know fast forward four years we're we're sort of known as, as one of the sort of household brands here in London servicing a whole host of of law firms from your big magic circle silver circle US firms and um, through to our sort of West End boutiques and and as I say as one of our evolutions I was delighted to, to sort of launch our legally speaking podcast in in 2019 and, and the whole premise of the business is probably much like UK is around trying to add value I think but to a niche target market and that's what we always founded the business on is how can we continually add value to the legal community in, in, in our sense and as you can imagine as a, a legal recruitment firm a lot of what we do is we're consulting we're advising businesses um, you know a lot of them may be not looking to 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 grow but some of them may be looking to grow some of them may be looking to retire so it's not just about bringing people on board but actually how can they keep those people and keep them sort of retained and developed and fostered um, and then we thought well we should do more we should provide sort of legal webinars we should provide podcasting services share inspiring stories use our networks to help educate and and just give more back to the to the legal community so yeah there's lots of things that we do but it's a very entrepreneurial platform that we run so there's those initiatives we, we do a lot to diversity and inclusion which is a very important i've just literally come off a webinar before this podcast talking of some new initiatives that um a, a, an algorithm and a piece of ai that's trying to sort out um work allocation within law firms and how that can be done on a non-conscious bias so that's really exciting and trying to get involved in those sort of projects to positively make positive changes and, and, and impacts to the legal sector so as much from a consulting advisory way we're always a shaping involving so that's why we brand ourselves as more than legal recruitment. So I don't know if that gives a bit of a spiel on, on us and what we what we do and if that's helpful. It absolutely does, yes. And I want to sort of deep a little, uh, well, uh, dive a little deeper into some of the aspects that you provide. But first question for you is, did you not want to practice law? Do you know what? It's one thing that I always ask myself, but believe it or not, my grandfather, who was one of my greatest mentors, always put me off it he said <laughs> do not become a lawyer <laughs> yeah and i don't he wanted me actually to be a chartered accountant he was very big on 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 letters and quality and education i completely understand that obviously yeah, he got his articles back in the day and was very academic you know top of his class high 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 performer and and he thought i should be a, a chartered accountant little did he know i am rubbish with numbers Kelly. <laughs> oh my so god was... robert you and i have that in common <laughs> numbers and i yeah. just don't get along <laughs> 
you know, words and speaking and things like that, I'm average, but numbers, I am below par by quite a way. So that probably would have ended very, very badly. Um, but no, I'm a people person. So I, I kind of felt that consulting and advisory was, was what I wanted to do. But as I mentioned, I always wanted to be connected in some capacity because I love talking to lawyers. You know, they're intellectually curious. Um, they're challenging, which I really like having sort of, you know, interesting debate discussions with. And yeah, I feel I can offer a service to them and help them with their careers. So I get a lot of intrinsic satisfaction from, from being connected to the law, working with lawyers and, and guiding them through their careers. And that's really important, particularly if you're running a business for us, where we would probably have a, a continual relationship with somebody as a newly qualified lawyer, right the way up to their journey of maybe making partner or becoming a general counsel or whatever they choose to do. So one thing that we build the business is around trust and long-term relationships. <laughs> so for me, I always feel like I'm going on their legal journey, those lawyers' journeys, you know, when they, they reach out to us and say, hey, I've been here for a few years, you know, what do you think I should do? Should I push on to make senior associate within my firm? You know, what's going on in the marketplace? So I do really like kind of being learning and but I, I guess I don't know if I'd have been the best practicing lawyer as, as well I think you you guys are, are far smarter than me so uh, I'll, I'll leave you to do all the uh, the technical stuff well I wouldn't say that I mean for someone to create a business surrounded around law and lawyers that takes a brilliant mind too Robert Yes, it, 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 thank you for that. It, it, it does, because as you can imagine, there's lots of um, challenges and opinions and you need to get your marketing in the right positions. You need to get the your, your proposition in the right way, particularly in very competitive marketplaces. And even the legal service, you know, legal services is a very saturated market. So I think you have to ensure that your service offering and your value to your clients and your ability to stay relevant and connected is so 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 important and that's why we always bring it back to okay how are we adding value to our relevant niche marketplace and, and that's the thing for me as a as a niche business entrepreneur owner is i'm continuously trying to niche within a niche right. i think that's the, the really important thing for us um, because i think that's how we can we can really kind of penetrate the market i think we have a lot larger competitors to us we have global organizations with far greater infrastructure and you know coverage and global offices and everything else that goes with that but I think where we we can kind of create and generate market share is who really kind of being focused and what I call inch wide mile deep in terms of our sort of saturating the market penetration so that's one thing we're constantly looking at as our strategy around working within a niche within a niche. So here in America they say that there are more lawyers than actual clients and they do turn out uh, quite a bit here. Just in California, California is a very, very large state in itself. And I think it's got, uh, oh boy, um, at least 30,000 plus uh, attorneys. Yes. If, if, if not more, actually. And, um, you know, it, it, and yes, everyone does have a niche and they do have their own respective um, area of practice, if you will. But America, again, is known and it's really built upon entrepreneurial spirit, right? It's built by entrepreneurs. It's built by small businesses. Now, I was born and raised in England and I've been here in America for about 23 years now. And this is home. But what I've done here in America, Robert, I've been able to work for one of the largest international law firms in the world. I've been able to work for a IP firm where I was the only female attorney there. It was a blast, actually. I mean, working with just guys, it's a total, total <laughs> blast. And then I realized that if I can make money for someone else, why can't I do that for myself? So I went out about going on 11 years now. Uh, I opened my own law firm. And you can applaud now or you can applaud later. I would actually like to say more than that. I think your your firm and what you've done, I followed your career and I know I've known of you for some time. So I think what you've done is a fantastic job. And I genuinely feel like you're an inspiration to so many uh, female aspiring lawyers that I work with. So no, it's it's amazing what you've done. And you're going to continue to do. You're one of these people that will never sit still, which is exactly. what I admire about you. There's always something else. What's next? What's next? And I think that's just the entrepreneur in you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and that's the point. That's what I was getting to. The, the opportunity that I have here in the States, I don't think that that opportunity existed when I was in England. But obviously, talking to you now as a fellow entrepreneur, my, I'm, um, 
my my spirits are lifted to know that there are more entrepreneurs or individuals following the entrepreneurial road in England itself, rather than just going to college, um, you know, graduating and then working for someone. Because that was the main thing when I was there. Um, so tell me about how and when the entrepreneurial side of England started to rise. I, I think probably, I, if I look at, say, for example, the sectors that I that I know, so if I look at recruitment entrepreneurs, so not just necessarily dedicated to legal, um, a large part of my cohort when I started in 2008 probably set up businesses probably five or six years after that. So we're sort of getting into sort of 2013, 2014, and around that era. One of my biggest regrets, in fact, Kelly, is, um, and one of my great mentors sent this to me is, you did this far too late. Um, you know, I said at the top that I was waiting to amass the right skills and experience. And this is why I'm a big believer in having mentors and people around you. Because actually, if I had probably give people give me a bit of a nudge, I, I perhaps got a little bit too comfortable as a director in a business coasting to a degree. Mm -hmm. And I felt actually I probably could have taken that step one or two years earlier. So I would say probably uh, from terms of people I know um, in my age group and demographic of people, um, it would have been around that sort of midpoint and sort of the 2013, 2014, 2015. I've seen a big boom of lots of people going into setting up businesses and encouraging entrepreneurial flair right the way across the board. The other thing, obviously COVID-19 has been awful you know and it's impacted so many people however i think people who have thought about being an entrepreneur or setting up a business and have sat there working at home, working for someone thinking actually there probably is no better time right. to think about trying to launch a business so i as, as an investor as well i've i've kind of been involved in three or four new initiatives that have grown and seen opportunity as a result of, of, of covid19 of course there's a lot more resources available now with online and just general structures making it all happen but i i, I hope and i see you know as a positive as a result of covid of course we can't excuse and everything that's happened it's, it's been awful and that's re i'm really sorry about that but in terms of where people have spotted opportunities and entrepreneurial flair i do think there's going to be some really good businesses and, and entrepreneurs that, that flourish and um, particularly from 2020 i just released a blog it's on golegalyourself.com and it actually is titled starting a business in the aftermath of covid19 and it's a great minds think alike, Robert. Great minds think alike. Now, that, that was exactly my understanding too, that people are stuck at home, literally. They're stuck at home and now they're, they're starting to think and the wheels are starting to, to turn as to, okay, well, do I really want to do this for someone else? Is this something that I can do for myself? And it's highly, highly encouraged that people with the, the proper skills, right? They've got the skills. All they really need to do is um, go out and, and take that step like you did and better late than never. And it's been fantastic to hear that you started in 2016 and here we are four years later and you're doing incredible. You're absolutely doing wonderful. In fact, do you have a firm or a partnership with another firm here in New York, is it? Yeah, we do. What we've done as part of our business development strategy is um, there are a number of US law firms that have penetrated the London market. Um, so, you know, they're encompassing the sort of the white shoe and some of the major um, New York headquartered law firms. And through those relationships that we've fostered, um, we've been able to sort of penetrate the US market. I have a big thing in business about working warm and utilization of your your, your, your current ecosystem and people around you. So um, yes, we've, you know, probably in the last sort of 12 months, we've been able to, to develop those relationships where we've broken into the New York market, which has been, been fantastic. And we have affiliations and collaborations with people on the ground in New York, which means that, you know, we're getting to, you know, it's a bit of a dream of mine to be a business owner and then to work, you know, and have the opportunity to work internationally my only frustration at the moment is obviously I can't jump on a plane and right. you know, get out there as much as I would I would I would like um, but yeah you're absolutely right um, we, we've been on a journey but I think there's also it's important to not misrepresent I think you have to eat breathe and sleep your businesses if you're a genuine entrepreneur and you can't do that unless you're passionate about what you do 
I think, you know, Kelly, I know how passionate about everything you do, and that just comes across in everything that you do, because you generally are passionate about wanting to deliver the best legal services, to, to help people, you know, even with your podcast, like everything you do is of a standard, and that's because you're passionate about making it that standard and wanting to always get better. And for me, it's the same. I'm passionate. I refuse to accept that, you know, I've made mistakes, and I think every entrepreneur does make, make <laughs> mistakes. You know? Absolutely. Every day I'm making those. mistakes. I, I'm going to ask you about those, Robert, but please do. Yeah. <laughs> but the one thing that keeps me going is I am passionate. And, you know, if I think without, without that passion, I don't think I'd be able to go anywhere near where it could have been because I don't know what the, the scary stats of the number of startups that fail after one year, three years, five years. You know, I still have that five years in my head. And I'm like, well, we're well past that point. I'm like, no, where's, you know, where's the next point? Where's the next point? But I'm continuously pushing myself. And that's the important, the important point. But you have to be passionate or else you, you will just run out of steam. Absolutely. Completely 100% agree with you. Uh, just to finish up on the aftermath of COVID-19. During the previous, um, not pandemics, but, but recessions and sort of global uh, downfalls, if you will, uh, right after, I believe it was uh, in, in uh, 2008, right? The, the dot-com yes. boom that happened yep. here in the States. There were, I don't know how many millionaires just lost everything, everything. And, but in the worst times possible, great inventions come out of those. So we got the gig industry, we got more entrepreneurs, we got more independent contractors come out of that time, such as yourself, you started your business. Believe it or not, I started my law firm in 2009. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Plus we have the, the Ubers and the Lyfts here. They started at that time too. So I know for a fact that we're going to have some great innovations that come out of this whole COVID-19 once it's over and done with. So there's, there's always a great side. And, and I agree with you, Robert, it's, it's very sad as to what's going on. People have completely lost their jobs, absolutely lost them. And then the small businesses, that's where my heart really belongs, right? The small businesses, they'll never be able to open again, but I, we're trying to give them hope. You are, I am, you know, we've got a platform that we can speak to pretty much the world right your podcast is, is literally it is international it's over 80 countries i believe it's in mine's gone international too um, i am going to touch upon the podcast but before we get there i always ask my entrepreneur guests what was some what was one of the worst decisions that you've made whilst you started your entrepreneurial journey for me, and this may sound quite bizarre, is um, I hired people too quickly. I think that's the biggest mistake I, I made. I, I think when I started the business, um, I was like, right, I wanted to scale and, you know, bums on seats means a, a great business, which we all know, not necessarily. It's the quality of your service. It's the, it's the loyal client for following. Ultimately, it's like PEP, you know, profit for equity partnering. It's the profitability of your business. You know, cash is everything in, in, in a small growing business. And I think for me, I got excited about hiring i had mandates and really we weren't we weren't structured enough to really give people the best opportunity um so i would have said i probably would have hired six months later down the line when we'd probably be even, even more established um and i think that kind of maybe got me blindsided and a loss of focus because in year one in any business it's about bd it's about clients it's getting off the ground it's you know you, you, you're all skin in the game you know i put my own cash investment into the business um you know you're not living on a lot you, you're just skin in the game and i think i was like right well i want to hire one or two people and and really taking a step back so to anybody who's starting out um yes you, if you do want to grow your business of course but where do you want to grow your business? Is that in terms of, you know, your, your clients, in terms of your bottom line? Is it you want to have people all over the world? And just understand what's important to you. Because for me, my, my, my ambitions have been, I now want to have a best-in-class boutique business that is known for doing really high-quality work that looks after people. Whereas initially, I probably thought I'm going to do this global domination in terms of offices absolutely everywhere and, and just be massive. And, and actually that's not as important to me in terms of where I think my core values lie. And, and so just having that sort of well-known sort of 
brand that, that does that. I'm not saying it's not possible to do it, but I think I've realized for me that just because you've got a hundred people, actually, if you've got a 10 person business that's doing really good people, that is just equally in my eyes as successful because it's benchmarked on your reputation. For me, it's reputation and business is everything. Um, I think being known for, you know, it, it's the classic scenario, isn't it? You know, you can build up a business for years and years and years and then one, one silly comment or one remark could, could, could ruin you, right? Yes. And we've seen that happen through so many businesses. So for me, it's all about reputation um, and, and trying to be known as, 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 as the best that can add as much value as possible. But yeah, hiring too soon to answer your question in short. I think out of all the guests that I've had on the show, Robert, that has to be within the top five mistakes made by entrepreneurs. Hiring too yeah. quickly, exactly. Uh, so we, we have a, a saying, and I think it's worked really, really well for, for people. You hire slow, you hire slow, really slow, and then you, you, you fire fast, right? You, you don't want to <laughs> yeah. hang around for too long, right? So you hire slow and you fire fast, yes. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that, that's great saying. So I'm, I'm taking that on board. I'm Perfect. always learning, so I'll take that. <laughs> there you go. What I found, find really fascinating about you, right? So you're, you're, you're not an attorney. You don't have that legal background besides your, your grandfather who was saying, no, no, don't go down, down that road. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. how is it that you are able to talk to attorneys and understand what type of job they're looking for or what type of position they would be right um, i'm interested how how did you figure that part out so uh, the key to being skilled i i think there's lots of recruiters in the world but a large part of the job is recruitment consultancy so there are a lot of technical skills in terms of you know simply if you're a lawyer you're, you know you're qualifying your prospects so actually the key to consulting is asking the right questions that understand the information so a skilled recruitment consultant will use those technical skills to qualify to get the best information so then they can advise their, their clients or candidates. So one thing I felt that I was good at, and I was talking about, well, I felt I needed to get to a level, I thought I could recruit any market. So before I'd, I'd started in the oil and gas market, I'd then moved to procurement and supply chain. So then I moved to legal. So I've, I've, I've experienced and um, had three different markets. Of course, you need to know your marketplace so hours and hours of market research i'm reading days and nights i'm speaking and learning all the time from people in the legal industry i have my own mentors partners in law firms so yes whilst i'm never going to be technically you know if we're going through an spa document you know what as a business owner I, <laughs> like, you know, I, i'm not going to be able to do the drafting to the level of a lawyer but i understand you know their world and i think that's really really important and i can advise and tell them you know what i think might be best for them I think that's the important thing. So coming back to really understanding what's important to them, asking intelligent questions that are all geared around that particular person and their journey and their career. That is where I feel like my skill set is, is, is helpful and has got me to be able to offer a real service. But you know, I, can't, I can't tell you before I started my business how many hours I was researching online about the, the legal sector and just law firms and trends. And, you know, I could tell you the top 100 every firm's pet you know, each each year and the movements there had been, I could track and trace all the partner moves, I could track and trace what's been going on because, you know, as, as much as I said I was rubbish with numbers, you do right. need to analyze, you do need to look at your market. But I had fantastic people around me and people who gave me great advice and, and, and upskilled me so I, I could sit in the room with a managing partner, a partner or an associate, whatever it is, and understand them because we, we're cross practice. So we don't just do corporate dispute resolution, employment, you know, we're, 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 we're sort of full, full practice. So it's understanding as much information as possible. Um, and ultimately what do people want to know from us is they want to know what's going on in the market. Exactly. Yes. You know, so it's my responsibility to educate them on the market. And that's what they want to know and how that best suits them in their long term careers. So before and I, I can literally see why people trust you and trust your, your recruiting firm. It, it, right there, you just said it, you know, you're the one that puts in the hard work for your clients. Uh, brilliantly said, Robert, before COVID hit, uh, what was the market like over there in, in England? 
buoyant. I think, you know, legal services were booming. Uh, you know, there was lots of firms and it was great to see, you know, there were some startup firms, you know, there were, there were legacy partners at Magic Circle setting up these really funky, cool boutique shops. And, you know, it was, it's, it was great. And, and so it was really, really good to see. And, you know, of course, because of COVID, certain areas have still remained quite buoyant. It's, 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 it's quite obvious in certain areas. We've had restructuring insolvency mandates. We've had employment mandates. We've had litigation Robert, I've lost you. Okay, if you can still hear me, I have lost you. I think your your screen is frozen. I'm going to chat with you for a second. Okay. Yes, there you Sorry. are. That's Sorry, okay. not sure what happened there. That's okay. If we can just pick up from the economy, right? So, obviously, uh, go ahead. So, yeah, as uh, you know, as I mentioned, the, with the the economy at the moment and the current situation, where I feel most um, empathetic towards is, is, is the junior lawyers who will have been affected. Because as you know, it's very hard for them to to secure. Okay, I've lost you again. There you are. Hi, Kelly. My internet's fine i think i don't know what's what's going what's going on did you pay your your monthly bill <laughs> <laughs> i thought you were gonna pay <laughs> okay let's let's pick it up again from there we'll, we can cut all this stuff out yeah don't worry sorry yeah no my, my internet seems fine um so yeah as i say i think for for, for, for junior i feel most sort of sympathy for, for junior lawyers at the moment given the current climate because it's very expensive to, to to qualify to train all of those bits and pieces and not having the guaranteed certainty that the jobs will be there wow. um is, is creating a lot of anxiety and so we're speaking to a lot of people at the start of their careers or just early on in their careers that are worried um and some of them are thinking about should we be cross training into areas where there's definitely going to be demand or more demand in, in, in the short to medium term, i.e. sort of R and I restructuring insolvency bits and pieces like that. Um, so yeah, it's been really, really tough for uh, a lot of the junior generation, but I hope, um, you know, things do get better. But as I mentioned, as of today, um, you know, as of Monday in the UK, we're going back to restrictions of just no more than six people gathering to, together. So, you know, I'm hoping, you know, with all of our restrictions, everything we have, things will get better so we can right. just get more mobility in the city because the city of London is not what I remember it when I first started um, and I feel sorry for a lot of you you mentioned around small business owners and chains you know this is one sandwich shop that I go to quite regularly that's a, a local shop and you know they'll be feeling the pinch right now so I just hope we can all get back to the city of London uh, en masse as, as soon as possible. Absolutely I'm, I'm so done with Covid as well I'm so done with wearing silly masks and I understand you know the health concerns but but it, it, I think people in general, especially here in the States, that they're, they're getting very restless as well. So it, it is time soon to get back to normal life, whatever that normal is going to look like, right? So, Robert, uh, you've mentioned that you have your hands in different um, areas, right? So one of them, you said you've become an investor. What kind of things do you invest in? So I'm 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 really big on um, startups. So particularly the the latest thing that I'm I'm most interested in is in subscription based businesses because the world is becoming all online, like it or lump it. It's it's an online platform world. So I always try to stay connected to what what I know. So one of those is a recruitment mentoring. 
um, subscription based platform business, which is going to help um, a lot of early stage recruiters and more senior recruiters in terms of best in class, because unfortunately the recruitment sector has been hit significantly, not just legal recruiters, but across the board, where actually access to learning and development, training, and all of those costs um, for those businesses is, is going to be hard. So we're offering a cost effective solution um, to try and help with sort of learning development and all of those other bits and pieces is to, to help people and also just to be there sort of as mental health is something I'm very passionate about I'm a mental health advocate so there's a few charities here in the UK that I get behind um, particularly in you know which ultimately recruitment is quite a, a target oriented business you can get a lot of sort of you know pressure and so that can affect mental health so definitely that side of things and and then just other um sort of startups in the recruitment world as well some other businesses um I'm, I'm getting involved in um which i'm really delighted to kind of one's kind of in its infancy um at the moment that i'm hoping to get off the ground so yeah anything sort of tech startup subscription or recruitment related is, is is what i look at because that's what i know and where i feel i can have the most value um where possible well that's fantastic we are going to add your uh information to our show notes and so if someone's listening to your podcast and they say that's exactly what i want to do and they reach out to you i'm sure you'll be able to chat with them right yeah more than happy to even if it's just a sounding board just to sort of stench check their idea or offer an opinion um always always happy to do that and i do a lot of mentoring as well and that's really really important to me because i really try to encourage people much like you Kelly, to bring out that entrepreneurial flair i would hate for someone to have got into my position where actually they felt i should have done this a few years earlier right. i want to be that positive voice in their head to say no go for it there'll yeah. always be a reason why you shouldn't go for it there'll always be i don't have enough money now's not the right time I, I, you know, my, my significant others saying it's, it's not the right thing for this, that and the other. You can create as many excuses as you like. But if you find that thing you're passionate about, have the people in your kind of, you know, what, your, your, your tribe that can push you to take that next step. So if I can push people to take that step, then I get a lot of intrinsic value from that. That's fantastic. Just the other day, Robert, I saw this saying and it said, being poor is hard. Being rich is hard. Pick your hard. <laughs> it's true it's isn't true it? exactly okay let's talk about legally speaking podcast how did Never you heard of it yeah, yeah no <laughs> <laughs> it's in 83 countries robert <laughs> how, did, how did you come up with that and, and um tell us how it's going yeah so um it, it, it was something that we we thought about in terms of we're speaking with all of the these law firms and lawyers day in day out and we thought there must be something else we can do to add value oh, no you're frozen again There you are. Hi. Yeah, it's bizarre. Because my internet is working. <laughs> Mine too. Because if it was on my side, right, it would, I would freeze. So when you're talking, do I freeze at all? It goes still. So right. You, so I don't know. I don't know. But I'm so sorry. Because my, <laughs> okay. I always check everything. <laughs> it must be the weather. I know you can edit it all out. But still, it's like sod's law, isn't it? I know. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, yes. So if you'd be so kind enough to pick up on where you just... Should I start with the podcast? Yeah. Yes, okay. yes. So one, one of the reasons we wanted to start the, the Legally Speaking podcast was the fact that we work with a number of law firms and lawyers day in, day out. And, and we get a lot of questions from them about the market, as I was explaining earlier, what's going on, um, you know, what 
career decisions they should make and, and all of these things. And we thought, well, as, as much as possible, we need to amplify our voice and speak to more people and give more. And we're in a content fueled society at the moment. You have to have any business needs to, in my opinion, be producing quality content to their niche market audiences. It's, it's not enough just to be able to, to be a sort of reactive service. I think you have to proactively give and give and give to your um, to your marketplace to build a brand to be known as thought leaders and and to be seen as as, as people that are really trying to do more and and so we took the risk in in october november last year to start the podcast because i didn't see anyone doing legal podcasts in our space in terms of legal recruiters there were lots of kind of podcasts generally and now it's great because there's so many sort of legal podcasts out there and so much information and for us we just wanted to share inspiring stories and you know give back to the legal community so yeah we as you very kindly mentioned within sort of a short space we're in sort of over 85 countries i believe in 850 cities top 10 percent of world podcast worldwide in apple sort of top for careers and business and and i must say it's a team effort as you'll know kelly so like production the editorial team the marketing team and everything that goes into it and we really try to think of interesting guests where we can get the most value so we've had you know maybe a partner that started their life in a in a small firm, move to a big firm, how they've gone on to make partner, or maybe we've got somebody who's trying to make a positive impact change for diversity inclusion. So we've had organization chairs come on and talk about their initiatives or how legal tech is going to, you know, make a positive impact um, within the, the legal sector. So all of these ranging things some Amazon best selling authors, entrepreneurs, you name it. So um, yeah, I think we may even try and get you on the show one day, Kelly, as well. So um, yeah, it's it's really kind of just to try and offer inspiring stories to add value to the legal and wider communities um, is why we do it and, and to have a bit of fun as well. Absolutely. Well, I've truly enjoyed our time together, Robert. You have been such an inspiration to my audience. I definitely know that because we do bring the best of the best, right, from different markets and different segments. And there, there's so many people that are, are hungry for knowledge and you're absolutely right, right? Put, put out, the, you start with passion and then you put out genuine information that people can absolutely use and you encourage people, right? It's, it's not about, oh, don't start a business. Look, look around you, everything's falling apart. It's always got to be, no, if you have that entrepreneurial spirit in you, you go ahead and chase it. I never, ever thought uh, growing up that I was going to own my own law firm, right? I never, ever thought that I'd, own go legal yourself a second business i never thought robert that i was going to be on covers of magazines as, as, a, as an entrepreneur that's changing uh, legal actually and i know i'm, I'm, I'm sort of uh, uh, boasting myself right but it's it's a journey and just like you i'm waiting for you to write a book <laughs> I, I think i think you need to but you've made it this far yeah. right so you need to write at least one book and then after that comes several but it's a story that i'm so proud to share with my audience your story and especially from across the pond from jolly old england right one thing i miss about england is the fish and chips are they still wonderful there they are they are <laughs> and we're recording on a friday so it's friday fish and chips night <laughs> here in the uk so i'll send you some pictures afterwards but i think that's a really good point that's very kind of you and kelly everything you've achieved you weren't boasting at all because it's fact and you deserve all the accolades and everything you've done it's a real pleasure that you and i get to speak and you know with dear friends and business and you know personally and that's great and i'm definitely going to be making sure when i get out of this covid i come out and see you and we have some fun but i think the thing you mentioned there what resonates with me is is your race and your journey and yes. the one thing I would say to everyone is don't put an age limit don't put a time on it it's your journey I whilst you should be inspired by people and be you know don't get yourself so bogged down in other people's races I think it's your journey so just wait your time so I think you, you gave a great analogy around the hiring um, of people there and um, run your race is what i would say and just on for me i always use the expression show teach inspire so i'll always try and show people teach people and then hopefully they'll get inspired to then go and run their own race um and that's what's important um in my opinion is it, it's about you it's your journey but don't get sort of imposter syndrome or anything like that because you know ultimately you just need to kind of remove that 
and go on your journey. That's some incredible advice, Robert. Absolutely. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience? Um, no, I think it's been, I think we've covered so, so much. I was just trying to think of a really bad joke, but one didn't come to mind. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I guess next time um, I'll think of some more legally focused uh, jokes for you. That's wonderful. And definitely we will have you on again because I do want to uh, follow your path. I want to follow your journey to success and, and within a short time frame. That's what gets me. You, you deserve all the accolades. Absolutely, you do. Four years, you know, four years. And then you started a podcast less than a year ago and you're already in 85 countries. It's, it's brilliant. I think people should definitely reach out to you. Uh, the ones that are in England, they should call you up and say, hey, you know, let me take you out for a beer, right? <laughs> and the ones that are over here should definitely connect with you and just sort of pick your brain as someone that's done what other people aspire to do, which is, uh, live the dream that they want live the life that that they want and uh, and you know become an entrepreneur live that's the only way that somebody will be able to live the uh, the life that they truly want is right to follow their own dreams and actually take action you're frozen again Robert. Okay, I guess we'll have to wrap it up if you don't if you don't hear me. That's okay. So the audience can get a hold of Robert Hanna. They can go to our website or they can definitely download the app. That's how you can get a hold of any of our guests by going to the show notes. And do listen to Go Legal Yourself on Apple and Spotify and any other device out there that allows for podcast shows. And remember, the only way you become successful is if you make today the day you go legal yourself. I am attorney Kelly Bagler, the queen of business law, and it's been my pleasure being your host today. Until next time, cheers to your success. Hi. I'm back. I'm not sure where I lost you there. This is bizarre. I've been on Zooms all day. Right. Like